Hey there, and welcome back to the Train of Thought, an educational monster train series where we talk about my choice of words. Uh, someone left a comment recently on one of my videos, I can't remember which one, talking about how often I use the word frankly, and I didn't believe it at first. So I went back and watched a few of my videos and found that, yeah, I say that word a lot. And it's interesting because what causes that is really you're just kind of getting my inner brain monologue for how I'm thinking about a run, right? And and so I'm just saying words that make sense to me and that make sense to my brain. But the funny thing about it is I don't actually use that word in like normal conversations with people, which is really bizarre. This is something that I think just kind of evolves out of speaking into my computer more or less because I don't have anything else to kind of interact with. It's pretty interesting. We're going to take a stab at saying that word less and I'm going to go back at the end of this video and count how many times I mistakenly say it. And we'll see how we do. I think that'll be a fun little thought experiment. I can definitely diversify my language a little bit if I dedicate more time thinking about it. I think the challenge is that I'm playing these games so late at night that I just don't think too terribly hard about my specific word choice. And ultimately, it kind of just blurs together and becomes one big mass of me saying the same thing over and over. I don't think it's a big deal, but it is interesting. And certainly I could do better because, you know, I'm not formally trained in any of this stuff. So I don't know. We'll give it a try and see how we go. Inevitably, I will say something wrong and someone will provide me a comment for my viewing pleasure later, uh, which I don't mind, actually. It's totally cool if anyone else has feedback about me saying things way too often or using words incorrectly. I don't know. Why not? If you're watching this video and you're one of the 20 to 30 people viewing it, then I appreciate your comments, whatever they are, even if I don't reply to all of them. So yeah, that's all I'm going to say about that. Let's go ahead and hit up the logbook because we're moving on in Wormkin today. If you recall, oops, wrong, wrong one, from our previous episode where we played as Spine Chief, we were a Corruptor Chief run, so we were this friendly units have more damage per echo, and we were cruising with some reformed eggs with bounty stalkers, and it was awesome, but ultimately I had a really bad draw order on the Divinity and bottom decked my crucial reform card, and took something like 98 pyre damage and was saved by all my pyre relics that I'd stashed over the course of the run. It was a much closer run than I think it looked, but we did get the win, which means that we are currently on a 12-0 win streak with the Train of Thought series, which is pretty exciting, right? 12-0? That's good. I've won every episode on this channel so far, and yeah, if I win this, then I'll have won with every single champion in a row which is pretty hype, so that's great. So now we're moving on to the last champion in the cycle. This is our Exile Wormkin champion, the Echo Rite. So if you've played Wormkin, you know that there's kind of two sides to the clan, whereas the Chief is much more Echo Generation, Echo Manipulation. The Echo Rite plays into the consuming of spells side of the clan. You're going to have etch synergies. You're going to have other things like that. You're going to have the ability to bring back our consumed spells. And you're going to be playing with things like Broken Memories, uh, Return Soul, and Wormkin etchings pretty heavily. So we'll go left to right. There's nothing really fancy here that I need to discuss for Echo Rite. Uh, and we'll start with Shellsmith. I think Shellsmith is not only the best path of Echo Right, but it's also the most straightforward. You just play consume cards on the floor and you get armor on your whole floor. Uh, this generates a boatload of armor because it affects all friendly units, which means if you overflow your floor with eggs or something or whatever, then you can get to a point where you're generating an absolutely massive amount of armor per turn. Uh, it scales 4, 8, and then 14. It's kind of a weird scaling. I'm not sure why it jumps by 6 instead of by 4. 
or by more. I don't know. It's weird. But the truth is, you're almost never going all in on Shellsmith. And you'll see why in a second when we get to the other one. But there is a splash path on this champion that returns consume spells. And it's kind of like Holdover, which is awesome, but better, right? Because it doesn't take up a draw. So usually you're going to be going like Shellsmith 2 and then one of the other one. And since I'm already talking about it, I may as well introduce it. That is this one on the right, Repeater. You know, I said I was going left to right, but apparently not. Uh, Repeater is basically holdover for consumed spells. But instead of it being holdover, it just gets returned to your hand. And it's got a really weird balancing. Repeater is a bad path to take two points into because it's like... What is it? Cold Channel Soul Guard, right? It's got that 1-1-2 one, one, scaling where it's one consume returned, one consume returned at mid rank, and then two at the last rank. Uh, this makes Repeater either all in or a splash, basically. If you're ever going to two in Repeater, you're doing something wrong, quite honestly. I almost said it there. I almost said it there, but I caught myself. Uh, so kind of the repeater is not a lot to say. It's really strong, but basically it's a path where if you start with it, you need to have very good consume cards in your start or else you just kind of die. It's just a 25-5 unit, which means it does very little. You need a really strong starting set of cards in order to not just die on ring two with the repeater. And that's spooky, right? Now, obviously, if you can keep it alive or you have a really strong start, you know, advanced prototype or something like that, then you can carry this through Talos or Daedalus and hopefully get to a solid plan for the mid game because this doesn't get stronger, really. I mean, the stat line gets OK. It's like 50 damage and 10 HP. Fine. But really, that's not a very good improvement. And if you're starting with repeater, you really want to go all the way because you're banking on returning two consume cards a turn on the max rank. And so, yeah, I think that's kind of it. Obviously, this prefers things like shelter or good survivability or just really strong consume cards in general so that you're slamming them every turn stuff. If you can get into a run where you have like rage generation and you just have like a one cost last stand being played literally every turn because of repeater, or maybe even two of them, you're just going to win, right? You're going to bring back and you're going to double quadruple and then just go out of control very quickly. This can also be true of things like reinforce or anything absolutely out of control like that. Anything that doubles scales really well here, obviously, but you can also get things like shelter for great survivability or other stuff. You really want a cultivated consume pile, right? You want to only be consuming good spells so that you get them back every turn. You don't want the low impact stuff like, I don't know, space, space prism or something like that. It's not bad, but it's not what you want. It doesn't give this thing a lot of value. So repeater is kind of sketchy in the early mid game, really strong in the late game if you can sustain it and you get some good consume spells. Usually if you start with shelter in this combat, so if you start floor one with a shelter and your starter, then you're going to be really strong with repeater. You usually can make it through that, right? Uh, the downside is, of course, you need to draw the shelter early or else you kind of just die because haha, your deck is 22 cards at the beginning and the combats are short. So going back to Shellsmith for a moment, though, like, like I was saying, it's really good to do two in Shellsmith, one in repeater. So you can just bring back a consume spell every turn and then play it. And if it's zero cost, that's great, because if you think about it, if I'm Shellsmith 2, which is armor 8 to the floor, and I have Repeater 1, it's like an extra etch, which is like 16, right? If I'm only playing one Consume spell a turn, then I'm only getting 14 if I go all in on Shellsmith. But on Shellsmith 2, Repeater 1, I'm getting not only the 8 from the one I play, but also the 8 from the one that returned, right? And so it's better. It's 16 compared to... 14. And of course, if your consume spells are really high value, then this is just better to get that repeater splash. So Shellsmith is really good. It's a great survivability line. And since etches are also incants, obviously incants are really good too. Um, there's also, it's worth noting here that there's a very kind of bizarre interaction with melting on etch triggers that you may not know about that I'll explain in case it ever becomes relevant. Sacrificial Resurrection, I'll actually hop over there real quick. Sacrificial Resurrection right here says consume cards in hand. 
Each of these cards that get consumed, even if they don't say consume on them, still trigger etch. So you could just burn your hand for something like nine etch triggers in a turn. So it's pretty crazy. And yeah, that's why etch behaves the way it is. So it triggers when a card is consumed on this floor and it applies to this champion and most of the lines you're going to take with this champion. The other thing that's cool here is that you're going to want to play this with other cards that etch. So your first of kin, your oh, bog deep, whatever it's called, the bog wormling, right? Because it gets etch on for attack damage and other such things. There's not a lot. If you look over here in Wormkin and you just click search for etch, there's only, I mean, okay, etch with units. There's only three. And one of them is not even, you don't even take this thing for the etch trigger, right? Glare Minder is good because it says sweep. It's not good because it says etch. So really, you're looking for first of kin or maybe bog wormling or the egg that it comes from, right? There's, there's not a lot of synergy here. So sometimes what happens is you're only taking etches for your champion. And that's kind of it. So yeah, the last path is my least favorite, but is workable. Uh, it's the Marsh Lord. So Marsh Lord spawns an egg on your floor. It changes which egg it is at every tier of the champion. So it's Bog Chrysalis at tier one, it's Kinhos Vessel at tier two, and it's Bog Deep Cocoon at tier three. It's worth noting that because it spawns a bog deep cocoon on turn round three or level three, rather, it gains two space at the max rank, right? But it's overflow space potentially, right? So you could play units and then still have only five space on your floor and then drop your echo right at the end and you overflow the floor. It's OK, but this means that you're probably only ever playing one banner unit with this. You're almost never taking two floor setups. So even things like Titan Sentry on Endless, you might, you know, you might have like your main plan that's going to go on your boss floor, and then you might have Titan Sentry. The problem is you need to play Marsh Lord with the unit that it should be paired with immediately. And if you draw out of order, like if I draw my Titan Sentry first, it's not going on that floor, right? It's going on a lower floor. It can really mess it up. There is a relic that makes this significantly more takeable. Where is it? It is Cheater's Hand, right? Because you can actually kick your champion to your turn two hand, right? And ultimately, you can just play it on turn two. This lets you take more banner units. The other thing that works really well here is anything that freezes cards in your hand. So that would be on Stygian, you have Icicle Fracture, is a great way of solving this problem. You can just freeze the champion. Alternatively, if you have cards, you can take Preserve, right? Preserve is really good here for freezing the champion. I mean, you'd probably want to even intrinsic it, right? So that it's always in your opening hand. So it's kind of interesting how this interacts with multi-banner unit runs. And you're probably only going to ever take the one. The other thing to keep, on, keep in mind is that Martial Art does nothing after eggs are hatched. This means that a good Marsh Lord run probably wants to be running eggs with it, right? You want like a really strong egg with multi strike or something. It's one of the only ways that the Bog Deep Cocoon can be made viable as a banner unit, right? Because you have to hatch it so fast and it's very hard to get 12 echoes on a floor by turn three. So it's actually doing something and it can be kind of tricky. I don't like this path, and you can probably tell from me describing it, right? There's a lot of nuances to it, to winning with it, and I don't like those nuances. It's, it has narrow lines to victory, and it gets there, right? I mean, you spawn, it's like Trample Penumbra, but better, right? Because you spawn a dude, an egg that you hatch, this egg hatches, it has Trample, it has better stats than Trample Penumbra, and it now can also scale with etching. So it's basically trample penumbra, but weird kind of, and it can benefit other eggs. So it's like universally better than trample penumbra, right? So it's not a bad path. It's worth noting that it's basically impossible to lose the early game with Marsh Lord, which is really nice, right? This, this bog chrysalis with plus 20 HP basically creates tanks and just slams Daedalus and Talos. You're, you can't lose almost. You really got to, ramp them up or just be too aggro and get yourself killed you got to try pretty hard to lose so if you have a really bad like start with no consume cards 
and you feel weak and you're shown like Marsh Lord or Repeater, you probably should take Marsh Lord and just kind of deal with the nuances of this path in order to survive. And you could pivot, right? You could do Marsh Lord 1 and then Shellsmith 2 or something and just leave the Bog Chrysalis in, but usually you kind of want to go at least two ranks in because that's kind of as far as you want to with the space because right can host vessels one space two and then when you're shown the third rank you need to kind of decide is this a bog deep cocoon run can i have the can i take the space right so so yeah in the terms of tiering that's basically as much as i need to say here so of course you know my scale s tier being you can't lose with it and d tier being that it's just bad and you throw it away i think echo right is really strong I've gone back and forth on this a lot between B tier and A tier. I think it's A tier because it's Shellsmith and Repeater are just so strong with the things that you want to be doing in Wormkin, and Marsh Lord gets there. There's basically no bad role here. I think it has to be A tier, but I don't like this champion. So if you're comparing it to like Soulguard, I am going to say Soulguard's better, even though I think that they're roughly in the same range in terms of power level. So. So it's not a bad random, it's fine. It's worth noting, this dude's complicated, right? It's tough to understand the etch and consume return mechanics on Wormkin. This guy usually stumps newer players to the DLC and it can be kind of annoying to deal with. So it's, it's a little big brain, but I think it's fine. So yeah, that is Echo Right. So let's hop back and head into our run. I don't have much else to tell you here. I'm going to keep it random with Covenant 25, uh, and I'm hopefully going to bring you a win today. I'd like to have the full series be a complete win fest, which would be exciting. So let's go ahead and hop in. Hope you're all doing well today. I've had a pretty good day today. It's been tricky. Uh, there's been a lot going on, but otherwise things are fine ready to play some monster train and hopefully have a good time of it. So let's see what we have. We have Exile Wormkin, Exile Stygian. We have Plating Seal Daedalus. We have Spell Shield Arcus, right? That is Arcus. We have Patient Seraph. We have Proclamation Mollusk Mage and Total Recall. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. What a weird start. I mean, Echo Breaks do benefit from Mollusk Mage. It's going to be fine early on. I don't... Mollusk Mage is weird. I, I guess it'll be okay. Kind of strange. And as far as consume spells go, Total Recall is totally trash. Like, yeah, there are times when it will do fine because, you know, you can pull your discard pile back and just burn spells. But I, I guess this is etch value. So Shellsmith would be okay here. I don't know. We'll have to see what we're shown. This is a good clan combo because you have Stygian. So I could take like an incant strategy here with Shellsmith and just be fine. Obviously, I wish I had... What is it? What is it? Frozen Lance instead of Foregone Power because Foregone Power is not a great incant setup. But it's fine, I think. Obviously, Frozen Lance would also benefit a lot from Mollusk Mage, but it's okay. Let's go ahead and send it and see how we do. I'm going to have to worry about Patient a bit here. There's no damage shield or obvious tricks to bait him here. Maybe like an Endless Titan Sentry would be really good to bait a few melee weakness turns off. Shellsmith would be really strong here if I see a good setup for consumes because I could build up an absolutely obscene amount of armor and then kind of just eat the hits we'll see let's go ahead and see how we do i'm going to look at the horde first what what oh no okay so this is one of the worst starting relic sets they could give me so wing clippings interacts negatively with etch because if you think about the wording of etch, I showed it to you earlier. Etch is when a card is consumed. So when wing clippings removes the consume effect, it does not trigger etch anymore, which is just bad, right? So if that's just bad, then I never take wing clippings here. But drop cage is like totally dead. 
I guess I could see Siren Song. Uh, I mean, the perspective Siren Song hit is better than 25 gold here. So I will take Drop Cage. This is bad, though. And maybe I see, like, I don't know, build a card or something. This is a terrible start. Okay, that's excellent news. We at least see Shellsmith. This would have been pretty cursed if I had seen Worm, the Worm Friend, the Marsh Lord. I don't have any etches other than Total Recall, so that kind of sucks. But I think Repeat, well, that makes Repeater just totally bad, right? So we'll take Shellsmith. This is a terrible start. Absolutely awful. Ah, absolutely awful. What are my banners? I'm seeing a Stygian unit. Stygian units are good. That's fun. A dupe and another Stygian unit. There's two Merchants of Steel, which means I'm not going to see another one for like ring five-ish. Okay. All right. So fine. I do have back line and I do have front line. I have proclamation. So I, I think I easily handle the what are they called the nine by twos the crossbowmen so i can take this horde even though i feel weak maybe i find a better relic but if i find a dead relic here i'm gonna feel really behind i think i'm gonna take this there's enough stuff oh i saw the circle saw the circle i'm gonna take in case divinity it's good for eggs it's good for anything really and these other things are not great rules of containment is okay like it would help me a lot in this early game to just free run through a lot of combats, but yeah. And then first help pack is just the rail spikes and that's it, which I'll never take here. I think in case divinity is better. I think it's better. It let's me play eggs or something. Hmm. How scared am I of how scared am I of these early combats? I could be a little more aggressive with rules of containment, but if I see an armor trial, I'm just going to eat a ton of damage anyway. I'm going to take in case divinity. I think this is better for all of the lines that we could see. I don't feel strong, though. I feel very weak. Okay, mark of invasion. What's my worst draw here? Echo right, two dead weights, and then what? Three foregon powers? Three foregone powers is pretty cursed. Any number of train stewards is fine. I need to ramp power fast. I'm gonna take the money here. I don't I threaten very little damage on this. Like it's nine plus maybe a little bit more. I think we're okay. We do have the echo breaks. Alright, so this is a fine one. I'm gonna send one of these train stewards out here. Okay, I'll play one of these down below. And then I'm gonna kill this guy in the middle. Okay, take six, fine. Interesting. I could consume here with the total recall. The question is how much do I respect Think about my turn here. Why am I thinking so hard on the first combat? Think, all right, think about this. I play Mollusk Mage. Okay, that's one energy. I play Total Recall, that's two energy. I can, and I play Echo Break, that's three. I do bring back, if I play Total Recall, I bring back. Interesting. What if I do Mollusk Mage? Orgon power, and then if I hit Total Recall, it's not a big deal. We're always going to play this Mollusk Mage here. In the front, I don't mind if it dies. I'm going to play one Forgon power, and we'll see what we hit. Okay, that discard is good, because now I can charge this a bit, and I can pop one of these up top. I let this collector go, by the way. There's absolutely no way I can take that. I take armor here and I just play consume versions of these spells. Yes. Consume. I will put this in mid. All right, we don't die. We at least had a vessel for that stuff. I'm going to play a train steward here. 
in the front. I need to... Oh, interesting. I got a cleric upgrade and not the foot soldier. I'll take that. That's acceptable to me. I will sack this steward. I will ping this guy because he spooks me. If I play one for us program power up here, I will take two less. It's worth it. Yeah, okay, fine. All right, I take another batch. I can proclamation up here. Wow, you yeah, know, Orgon power. I mean, uh, Mall's Mage does some work there. That's pretty fun. I can just kill him and then we ping. We ping this dude, I guess. I'm going to play Mollusk Mage middle because I should hit the other proc. I've hit the other proclamation, so we'll just slam 100 into him and that makes this free. Yeah, fine. We should make it through now, right? We do 20s. I could do some damage into him. Wow, yeah, right. Mollusk Mage doing work. Yeah, we're we're fine now. We're fine now. Cool. Oh, one of those was the consume one, right? Okay, 13 for the trial. I'm taking shelter. I'm taking shelter. Um, yeah, I'm taking shelter. I need a good consume spell, and this is a good consume spell. This is looking like it might be some kind of a double stack minus one shelter, and then take a repeater at some point and just play this every turn. I need a consume spell 100%. Hosting kin is fine. But I have enough pings, and I don't think this is impactful enough, even with the infusion that I don't need. I'm going to take shelter. Okay, uh, Mollus Mage number three. No, it's going to be... What is it? It's going to be Offering Token, I think, because I see a Stygian banner, and it could be a Siren. Right? Right. And these other ones are not it today. Like an Offering Token. I have enough to re-roll if I absolutely have to, so maybe I'll have some good hits. Just give me a good Siren. Endless 25, show me a Titan Sentry, please. Oh my god, what is... Oh. What is this? Both Silophyte and Cold Kalia. This is... This is horrible. I have to take one because I had to go this way. I needed a unit. It's never Silophyte. I have, like, I mean, I get it. I have Proclamation, but I'm going to be setting up top. I guess I'm taking Cold Kalia. Oh, I had the perfect upgrades for Shark. I don't even want to upgrade this thing. It's so bad. Gross. Uh, okay. I need to not die here now. What's in this temple? Plus 30 big proclamation not terrible right it just auto kills the boss if i take this i'm really scared i'm really weak too really weak all right i'm gonna i'm not gonna re-roll this because the only thing that would be good here was large stone and i don't want to pay that much money into this cold kalia she's terrible so I'm going to just do plus 25 and plus 10 on her. And this is the I don't want to die on ring to play. I'll spend 50 gold on this, basically trade my trial, and we move on. Not good. But I think we can't lose with something this big. I need to get money. What would I... I can't go to this steel shop because there's no unit that I want to upgrade here. So I go to the Hellvent and I do shelter, I guess. Yikes. Spikes is not terrible. It does represent a lot of damage in a cold Kalia. You know what? I'm really weak. I'm just going to turn this off. I don't have a shop that I can reasonably take. Pyre Remain Steel Shop is terrible because I have a terrible unit. We keep this off and we just coast. I 
I'm not feeling good about this run, guys. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is pretty bad. If I... No, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a train steward in mid, and we're gonna just ping off one of these guys in the front. I want the conduit infiltrator to skip mid. It guarantees me the collector, because the train steward gets mid and sweeper gets top, so... All right, uh, what can I do? I need, oh my gosh, I need to double ping, right? I'm gonna ping the five damage guy on the bottom and I'm gonna ping off the damage shield on the infiltrator and we let this be it. Okay, I ping this back fellow to save this. I really wanna play shelter, but I need to take a risk on one foregone power and of course, just bloody of course. Oh, okay. Okay, well... What am I seeing? Ah, uh, alright, so here's what we're doing. We're gonna play Mollusk Mage, and we're just gonna kill the boss with a truckload of proclamations. Right? Because Mollusk Mage is going to give me 100 damage proclamations, and I just kill it in two proclamations. Great, you know what? It's fine. Everything about this is peachy. Hey, look, we just die horribly. Like, get killed. Okay. <laughs> All right. I am taking another bound. I'm taking Bounding Echoes. Oh, am I? What am I doing here? Bounding Echoes is just good. It's just good. I need more consume spells, and this... I don't know what I'm... I mean, maybe I do something with this proclamation more. It helps with shelter. I could take shelter number two, but I might just dupe it because I have to go to the Stygian banner. I... yeah. Okay, Bounding Echoes. Just show me Siren Song. I'm desperate enough I'm gonna take Flash Freeze. Yes. Yeah, I need to... I need to take a card that makes it so I don't die on Daedalus. And this card is really good on Daedalus, right? So we take that, and we go right, and what am I duping? I'm just gonna dupe Delter. I just need density of good triggers. I don't take this money. This run is terrible, by the way. Really, really bad. I need you to know that. And I need to see every banner that they can show me that's good. Okay, good units. All right, let's play a video game again. Um, okay, the question now is, which one am I more sad to see lose? You know, if I only see it once and it's here, what am I going to wish I take more? It's going to be Titan's entry, right? Because I'm really scared about patient and I'm really scared about a lot of things. And this dude is just good. Nameless Siren, if this were Siren of the Sea, I might take her instead, because Siren of the Sea has good scaling and is good incanter. The problem is with Nameless Siren is my etches are kind of weird right now. Like it's obviously I get defense from the etches, right? Which is good. So this this line I think works. But I don't know. Is this it? Is this Nameless Siren it? Can I actually protect her? I don't think I can, right? Maybe I can. How do I keep her alive? Interesting. So the thing is, is I see another unit from Daedalus. The worst unit selection would be like... Would be what? I'm trying to think of the absolute worst. Like Glugsider. And... Kinho's Carapace. I can think of some pretty cursed stuff, but I would take an egg. Any egg at this point that they showed me. I would take any egg. I would take any siren that they show me. So I think there's... I think there's a lot of hits, right? That would be pretty good. But what if they don't show me an offensive line? If they don't show me an offensive line, I just lose. I think Titan Sentry is going to be way more useful to me, though. I think he just is. And this helps so much. I wish I had seen him before, so I would have given him the Endless plus 25, and I would feel extremely strong right now. But this will do just fine. I think he's correct. 
And then let's look at this cavern, I guess. I'm never going to dupe first. I'm going to see what the cavern gives me and then go from there. Right, yeah, so here's the thing. I just take Holy as shield into patient. And then I immediately just throw it in the hell vent right now. So I have two of them. And those become exceptional consume spells. I could take most blessed sword. It's actually really good. But I think because it's patient, holiest shield is just nuts. So we do this. All right. And this is why you do the cavern before you do the hell vent. I go in here and I just straight up dupe holiest shield right now. Unupgraded. Don't even care. Good. Because now I have two cards in my deck that if if it really hits the fan on Daedalus, I can just bust those out. And we keep it at 15, right? We keep it at 15, yeah. Yeah, okay. What am I doing? What am I doing? What am I doing? Let's see, do I, where's my next dupe? My next dupe is ring seven. It does have a temple adjacent to it. So I could do a hot shark self-infuse here. Right? That's good. All right, I have Colt Kalia on this run. If I take that, that's... I'm going to get at least one infusion, so that's 25. So I'm at 40. I'm at 40. I'm going to take this Relic on ring 5. That's 55. I have plenty of late game temples, so I should always be able to hit the requisite shard number. So I'm just going to go here. I don't see this money adding enough value. 15 shards is a very comfortable level for how strong I feel right now, which is to say not very at all. So, so yeah. We hate that. We hate that a lot. I can block some of this, though. Do I play all these? I wish I could play all these on one floor right now, but I can't. I could play mid. I could play mid. What is the advantage of playing top here? Is there one? Not really. I mean, I'm going to eat explosives no matter what, unless I see double pings. Yeah, I think I do this and we just eat the damage with Cold Kalia. Yeah, fine. I'm going to etch here. And then Titan Sentry is going to play bottom, I think. Yeah, fine. Feels bad. That does take care of his damage shield at least. Pretty good roll. I'm putting Mollusk Mage into this floor. I'm putting Echoes somewhere. What does this Echo Break even do? Nothing? I could just save him 5 HP. I think I will. What's well, 4 HP right because of the incant, but I think I will. And then I'm going to play Foreground Power on that dude because he's the most threatening here. I'm going to put it in mid actually, right? We have, what, 26 damage, 31 damage on the floor. No, oh, we're actually fine, right? It's taking nine, so we'll put it bottom. Cool. All right, shark, don't die on me now, bro. Ugh, these are not consumes yet, so I can't play them. I could actually just ping my shark a bunch, but I don't think that's correct. I blast bottom floor to kill one of these. Actually, it's better not to, is it? No, I, I kill one. So I'm going to leak it otherwise. And I need to respect the fact that I might just get destroyed by Daedalus. I'm actually going to double ping the, the bomb. I need to respect Shark's HP a little more. And I guess we'll just foreground power bottom because I may as well. Yeah, sure. Okay. Give me edges, please. Oh, gosh. Okay, I'm just going to play Total Recall and go all in on this turn. Sure, that's fine. I'm going to send it on this dude in front. 
fine. I'm going to ping out this bomb. This is a really valuable frostbite on... HP is more valuable, I think, so I'm going to ping out this bomb. I thought about it. I can also just foregone power into him here, which I will 100% do. This, I think we win this fight now. Total recall, saving the day, I guess. What do we see? Train stewards are not it here. I'm going to actually kill the 9x2, save shark a little bit going to frostbite this dude in front because it goes to what, 6, 11, so that's 13. Right, 13 means it's in range of being killed by the front too, so the 15 goes into this fellow. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I'm going to put the train steward behind Shark. Okay. We're in Relentless now. We're gonna play... I'm gonna play Shelter first. Then I'm gonna Proclamation the front fellow away. This kills the back dude. I'm gonna play Mollusk Mage mid. And I'm going to send the token. Okay, that's fine. Send away the, the shield here. I think we have enough armor on top to live. And I'm just going to kill the bottom dude here. Okay. And with the frostbite, we should be okay. Maybe show me a proclamation to seal the deal. No, it's okay. I can't really blame you. We're just going to plug numbers in. Daedalus and be fine with it. I think we get there. Yeah, we get there. Not too bad. Okay. Okay. Show me Siren Song so I feel good about this drop cage. Never lucky. I am going to just slam Wormkin etchings here. This lets me just bring good spells back. My hope is that I eventually just get rid of all consumes and then I just play Holiest Shield every turn. Now, obviously, if I had taken... Man, if I had taken that um, first Hell Pact, I would have felt really good here with the Holiest Shield, but there's no way I would have known. The first Hell Pact was really bad and already the Encased Divinity has done fine. I'm taking Etchings, though, and you can't stop me. It just is good. Okay, these are good cards. These are very good cards. I'm fine with this. First of Kin is pricey, but it does have etch. This means my carry is no longer a siren. Well, uh, still, it's good that I did this because I can I can play first of Kin. I can lean hard on etch and use a ton of holiest shield energy. And yeah, that works. That works, right? This works. I think it is first of kin here. It's just a body that's decent. I mean, I don't love this unit's line. Three Ember is fine for what it does. It's a good stat line. But it could be Bog Chrysalis too, right? Hatchet. Provide armor. They do a lot of damage. They do more damage than I think First of Kin does, but First of Kin can get there if I really just burn my whole deck down and play a million, a million consumes as opposed to the best consumes. I'm going to take First of Kin because I think it's the smarter line here and it helps in the short term, right? Because I'm not going to be able to upgrade this Bog Chrysalis until ring five, which means it's just terrible and I need to get stronger right now. So I'm going to take First of Kin. And maybe we have a line. Maybe we have a line. I can fit Echo Right and First of Kin on top. Cold Kalia can just kind of chill with Shark at this point. She's not terrible with plus 10 and plus 25, which I think were critically important, by the way. 
I'm just gonna remove her at some point, or maybe I just send her. I don't know. It's fine. Again, I sadly I don't think that this can be a run where I take space. What is it? Is this enough? Echo right in the back with first of kin. Maybe if I hit two multi strikes, I can get there. Otherwise, I don't really feel comfortable. I think the holiest shields are going to be strong once they activate. But, hmm. I'm relying a lot on Mollusk Major right now. Actually, I did find in the early game. This is a really bizarre run, and I'm not happy about it. I wish it had just been smart and easy. Like, I don't know, show me a Siren when I had to pick this Colt Kalia, and I would have felt really good. Siren or a Shark. I think taking the shark was still correct, by the way. I thought about it more, and I, I really think what it adds to the run is a lot of value. Because you've seen it before on this series, you can just play two self-infused, endless, plus 25 sharks, and they will do a lot of work. What am I doing here? I think I have to take energy, right? Because I'm never guaranteed to see first of kin turn one. And if I play anything top floor and then draw a turn two, then I can't play it. Energy's not ideal, but I think I have to. Do I? Yes, I do. There's There are draw orders that just outright kill me if I don't. Not good. Not great. I don't love it. With that unit, I don't feel like I need to go to the Wormkin banner here. I don't have a good infusion, though. Maybe I just infuse Mollusk Mage into it? What the heck? Or do I self-infuse it? I could self-infuse it. Where's my next dupe? I think I already talked about this. Yeah, it's ring seven. I do have a temple on ring seven and ring eight, so I could theoretically self-infuse shark and self-infuse the worm buddy. And if, oh man, they're both after Arcus. Fortunately, Again, I didn't tell you before, but Holy's Shield will destroy Arcus. I can have a pretty low damage floor and just have set up like 50 damage shield. I really want to go right here. It's a good removal set. It's a good Merchant of Magic. HP's comfy. I only go left if I'm really scared, and I think I need another infusion or something. And there's not much they could show me that I would really take here. Right? Right. Yeah, we're going to go to the right side. Show me good stuff. Permafrost is juicy on Holiest Shield. I'm going to look in this temple. Spell chain. Purge is interesting here, right? Because I have the hope for peace incoming. So purge gets converted to consume, which means I can do this to turn any spell into a consume spell. If I want to could put it into proclamation. The other interesting thing is you could do that with spell chain, right? I could put because the spell chain copies get purged, right? So this makes a spell chain copy results in a spell becoming consumed twice, which is really good. I'm going to minus one spell chain shelter. Probably I have low shards, so I'm happy to take stuff. Let's look at what I get in this dark forge. Okay. With repeater shown to me here, I think we take it because there are enough good consume spells and this is going to be very valuable. You saw it in Daedalus. I was consuming things and then I stopped consuming things because I ran out of consume spells. And my consume density is really bad right now. Repeater helps with that a lot. I take it. This also means I can just repeat. I can do insane stuff like, where is it? Worm can etchings, and then that puts all the stuff on top of my deck, and then I repeater worm can etchings, and I just had like six consume spells, and I just slam a floor, which is a really strong line. I'm gonna remove train stewards because I have so many units. It's not time to remove Colt Kalia yet. She's gonna do fine. Her stat line is good because of the upgrades I gave her, so I'll remove her later. It's fine. Goodbye, train stewards. Glad to be rid of you. I'm going to minus one spell chain. The shelter. It makes it ridiculously good. Yeah, it does. 
It becomes one energy for double effect. This is really strong, because remember, the purge becomes consumed thanks to hope for peace, which lets me do some weird things here. And going to 30 is comfortable here. I'm fine with that. Plus 10. I'm going to put it in a proclamation. This way it's 100 no matter what, which helps a ton right now. I'm going to reroll this. Hold over on proclamation. No. Uh, consume. 20 magic power and consume is really good on an echo break. It just becomes an edge trigger. Or I can put it in the proclamation, actually. The other one. I'm going to do that. It becomes really good. Okay. Now let's look at this purge minus one here. What would I want to convert into a consume spell? I could do it. No, it's never. It's not worth putting it in a proclamation here. It's not worth putting it in Holy Shield. These are already all consumes. You can do some weird stuff. I could put holdover and offering token. Give it purge. It becomes consume holdover and it doesn't work. But it's kind of weird that you can do that, right? <laughs> None of these get this treatment. I don't have a good spell for this right now, which is okay. A-OK -okay with me. This holdover just kind of sits. Man, if only they'd shown me a siren song, I would have done a minus one holdover on this and we would just be cruising on five. What is it? Five days. Jeez, that's incredible. I wish. I wish, I wish, I wish. But alas, I'm going to take a minus one in a holiest shield. Anything to improve these is nice. Fine. And then we kind of just chill. Where am I going next? Steel shop. Man, I, it's tough because I've seen such good upgrades on this run, but it, it's all out of order, right? All out of order. I saw the perfect shark upgrades before I saw the shark. I saw holdover, but I don't have a good hit. I have this iron drop cage that I'm just praying they show me siren song so this run becomes easier. <sighs> I don't know about this run, fellas. I do not know. We're not feeling good right now. 30 is about as high as I want to go. Fine. I'll keep my 140. There's a chance I go left up ahead. And if I do, I want to have money. I'm going to take Mark of Invasion. I'm cool with that. There are a lot of good draws here that get me out of this. Yeah, this is one of them. I'm going to play... Cold Kalia mid. Yes, I'm going to play Echo right top. I'm going to flash freeze. Total recall flash freeze. This puts total recall and flash freeze in the pile for the resolve trigger, and I don't take a hit. That's good. Okay. Exactly right. You know, I'm going to put first of kin on this floor right now. Yes. Can't play anything, which means I do get total recall back next turn. Can't play shark because of that draw order. Gross. Really gross. Well, fortunately, Cold Kalia exists, so. Yuck. I'm going to basically leak this dude in the middle. Is this foregone power a net positive? It is, right? It's 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The 6, 5 is already better than the 10 armor he gets, so it's worth it. Fine. Total recall. Okay, I am just straight up going to total recall here and slam whatever it gives me. Sure. You know what? Thanks, Cold Kalia. She's she's doing work, right? Because I didn't get the shark. I'm going to just etch his value. I don't know. Draw me a card. Fine. And I'm going to put this frostbite into... This bottom floor is pretty tough. 
what is this? This is 164 HP. So if you have 164 HP and you're taking 91, 73 with 16 frostbite. So you take 15 next turn, which puts you at 58. So it's two hits. So I take 14 right now. I take 14 right now. That's fine. That is fine. I'm going to respect the mid floor a little bit. I'll respect the bottom floor a bit, actually. I'm going to leak this guy in the middle pretty much entirely. Yeah, all right, we're going to do bottom floor. I'm more worried about that. Again, don't play our purge card yet. Okay, this is excellent. I'm going to blast one of these here. Etch up top is good. I could proclamation top, but I don't think I need to, right? I think I'm going to etch top with the echo break, but I'm going to blow away. Oh, I can do both, right? Interesting, because I can play this proclamation mid once I ping out the back fellow. It's plus 10 is really good here. So now we're putting all the damage into the Guardian, which is good. I can then etch up top and just blow it away. But I'm going to play the Echo Break first for the etch trigger. Good. And I can keep Cold Kalia alive. Good. And his foregone power is just best on the bottom. Yeah, fine. Okay. It doesn't look terrible. All right, and we just go crazy on etches. Yeah, this is kind of the go crazy moment. I'm going to play this echo break that is consume. I'm going to wormkin etchings, which sends all that crap on top. I'm going to ping. Oh, I can't. I'll have to try this infused foreground power. All right, now I can ping one. Fine. Cool. And now I just send a ton of infu a ton of etches up top, right? Yeah, we just etch. Just etch, friend. Echo break. I'm going to flash breeze these dudes on the bottom because I don't want to take that damage, and I'm gonna now play Wormkin etchings. This is kind of a taste of what I'm expecting to see. I should now bring back Wormkin etchings and just cycle a ton of cards. Here we go, here we go. Yeah, Bounding Echoes. Shelter. I can... I'm gonna play Echo Break on myself here, so I can double Shelter. We easily win this now. I'm gonna blow away the dude on bottom. And then I just play Wormkin Etchings. And we do it again. Yep. We feel real comfy right now. You can just kind of see how strong this gets, right? Look at me. I, I feel really good. 125 damage. Give me some multi-strikes and some spell upgrades. Maybe I can eventually actually play my Holy Shields in this. This looks real strong. This looks really strong. Yeah. Cool. Okay, we're, we're getting there. We just need to upgrade now. We have a plan. We're doing fine. I don't need to add these. Right? You saw that. I have a good density. I just need to upgrade things. So I need magic and steel shops. Pronto. I think both are really important, right? Both are really important. I don't want to clutter this with anything here. These are not it. Fine. Reserve is pretty good, but why? Reserve is a one-time draw, but it does mean that if I see some weird draw order, I can keep, like, Holy Shield for the right turn. I'm going to take Preserve. It's really strong here. All right, give me that hope for peace, please. Remember, don't click anything in case this is a Divine Artifact. Fine, cool. Hope for peace. I can now play my shields. I go to the right because I need to see steel shops. 
because I have nothing good. I can take multi-strike really well. I can take endless really well. I would take plus 25s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Funny. Just show me what I want. Plus 25 and endless. I suddenly feel a lot stronger. Excellent. This is already worth every penny. We re-roll this. Just give me a multi-strike quick. Quick. Is it ever quick multi here? No, I have so much defense, I don't really care that much. I'm going to go to this other steel shop, probably. I'm going to remove both train stewards here because I generate enough um, enough consumes that I'm fine with this. And this puts me in range to afford stuff on the next comp, next uh, floor. Take this horde. Echo seedling. Okay. Okay. Oh, refracting lens. All right. We're seeing stuff now. Echo seedling is kind of bonkers because it just lets me double up my first one. My first consume for a really big edge turn. If I see that on shelter, it's crazy. Nah, that's it's good. This is good, right? But is it infinite pyre HP good? I don't know. Infinite pyre HP on this run is pretty awesome. It's to the point where like I could on the divinity, I could just leak enemies and take like 50 and then just gain 25 back on the next turn from my wormkin etching setup. I'm going to take refracting lens. You know, echo seedling is nuts, but refracting lens is just so good here. Okay, caverns. Yo. Yo, I was just talking about leaking, and if I leak things with Heaven's Gold, I feel much better. Oh my gosh. Consume Gift of Gratitude? But it's blessed, right? Oh, I wish I had taken the stupid Hell Pact. Whoa, I can just play Gift of Gratitude every turn? This is too good not to play. This is too good not to take. I have the blessed seed of hope for peace with gift of gratitude. This is how you actually, what is it? A divine stamp gift of gratitude here. Truly blessed. Uh, and honestly, I don't mind. I don't need the heaven's gold necessarily with the refracting lens just giving me so much pyre HP back. Oh, I'm going to take gift of gratitude here. This is crazy. Okay. All right, uh, we're feeling pretty good after that. Pretty good. I can take armor 15, right? Again, this is a case where armor 15 is fine because if I leak stuff, it's like, oh no, time to just etch more, right? As long as I don't die to the harpy. And that's only 45 shards. We're really respecting stuff here. So yeah, like... We're really respecting stuff. We're going to do mid floor again on the cold Kalia. I'm just going to. That is a 10 by 15. Oh, oh, that's rough. And we're just going to take Holy Shield here for six. And bring it back. Oh, I mean, she clears it, I guess. It's fine. I could put First of Kin in the back now. Weird, right? I'm going to play this at zero, so I bring it back, and then we need to respect the first. Of course, I discard the other foreground power. We need to respect the first wave the most. I'm glad that Cold Kelly was alive for that, because it means we're more likely to... How do I not die? I take 30 here. Yeah, I just casually take 30. That You know what? That'll just have to be okay. It'll just have to be okay, right? All right, I play shelter first. We just we just ramp this number as quickly as we humanly can. Ah, oh, we kill the front, dude. That's that's pretty cool. With this bottom, I take thirty, but I also gained thirty pyre HP on that turn, basically. So I think I'm actually okay. Let's bounding echoes here. Let's. 
I can get this kill. I can put eight damage shield on and just foregone power this. And we're cool. All right. I just need to see worm. I just take 140 gold. What the heck? I am going to slam proclamation up top, right? Yeah. Yeah, we do. Because I really want to... I should have maybe play the shelter first, but I think this is okay. Because I want to now take 140 <laughs> gold. And then shelter. And then we freeze the one cost fellow. Take five. But again, I'm still up on armor here. We clear that. I'm going to put frostbite into harpy. I'm going to bounding echoes. I'm going to slam etch up top. Do this, discard that. It's fine. I'm actually going to discard the mollusk mage. I play shelter. I play wormkin etchings. And I, I got my gift of gratitude back. Yo guys, this this run is uh this run's getting there, I think. This is nuts. Look how much armor we're going to put out here. I'm just going to... How... I'm going to take the 150 into her down here. That's good, I think. I, I think this is winning. I have enough armor. I'm going to take 160 gold. And then I take shelter. And... Oh no, I didn't play them. Oh no, I got a holiest shield. We win. I'm at full life. I, I leaked a 30 HP enemy, and I'm at full life, by the way. Hey, 21 damage shield. I think that beats patient. Okay. I earned 320 gold on this combat. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're doing okay. I think we're doing okay. I'm going to take broken memories because that's crazy here. Yep. Well, this run has kind of gone places. I don't have a good infusion for first of kin. Guardian Stone is not it. It's not it, no. I'm just, am I just not going to infuse my, I'm going to do the self-infuse, right? Yeah, do the self-infuse. I have so much money. Wowzers. Whoa, 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 that's crazy. I'm going to go left because I want to upgrade. If I see a single multi-strike, I feel much better about this. Yeah, and I can just buy a ton of removals here. Multi-strike, please. Nope. Nope. Sad. Temple. Minus two. Minus two into Wormkin etchings is great. Yeah. I'm actually at a point where I could remove Total Recall because I don't want to play it. This is the problem with this card, right? I mean, it did okay in the beginning of the game because I started with it and I had no other consumes, but this just turns terrible cards into consume spells and then it messes up my Wormkin etchings. I'm going to put this minus two here. Let's think. If I have two more self infuses, one on ring seven, one on ring eight, that's 50. Right? That's 50. Yeah. So I'm at 95 then. If I take this, I go to big number 111 or 110 rather. This does mean, okay, I see, I don't see another steel shop. So let's look at the steel stuff first. I need to think. All right, so Titan Sentry is good. I need to see a multi-strike, please. Endless. I don't see another Steel Shop if I go for the self-infused line. Right. Oh my gosh, this is bad. Let's Concealed Caverns here. Another Wormkin etchings. It's tough, right? Because Unnamed Tome, I guess, is better for Patient and for Divinity. I already have the Wormkin etchings, so I'm just going to cycle the one, which is fine. Right, I'm just going to cycle the one, which is fine. Take Unnamed Tome, it's fine. This is tough, because... I have no upgrades on my dude. At all. At 
all. I think I put Intrinsic into Holy Shield. The problem is, how am I actually killing enemies? It's going to be Self-Infused Shark and then Dupe the Shark and have two of them. That's enough Frostbite to kill them, right? And I just replay them every turn. I did take Ember, so that's okay. Okay, I mean, that's a line. That's a line. If I That's the line if I miss multi-strike. It means I do miss multi-strike, which means I should take upgrades into my dude. If he gets sniped, I could put Endless in him, which is really not good. I'm just going to take... I'm going to take the Incant Armor 2 because that's more durability for Relentless. Which is fine. Ah, the yikes, right? I have to go the... Self-infused shark, dupe shark line, which is 40 pack shards, which puts me at 85. I think I take this value stone into Wormkin etchings. It's really good. Really good here. And then I also think I intrinsic holy shield, right? This means I'm guaranteed to have a really tanky first couple turns. Right? And this also means this always gets repeated which is really good. It could be Proclamation because this is going to help a lot. I'm glad I put a Consume in that when I saw it, huh? I'm going to know it's going to be Holy Shield because it's patient. This is... Yeah, I'm going to go 10 over on shards here. And this is just going to be correct. The minus two on Wormkin etchings is really important because I'm going to be replaying two sharks a turn, potentially, in the Divinity. Mollusk Mages are just dead here. I can spend a lot on removals, can I? Am I really not going to another steel shop? I guess I'm not. I've given up on the multi-strike dream. I, this is this is going to be a case study in just never see multi-strike and deal with it. And we're going to have to answer the entire run another way. Plus 25 is better here. He just has a huge HP pool, I guess. Ugh. I couldn't have done large stone, right? Yeah, could not have done large stone. Endless. I think it's endless. It's perfectly dumb. So I'm going to take plus 25. This is going to be terrible, and we're just going to be okay with it. I'm going to remove cards. Big remove energy here. Orgon powers are probably my worst one. It might be Mollusk Mage. It actually is Mollusk Mage, right? Actually, Siren's time to die. No. Siren gets removed once I have the shark infused the first time. So I think she actually gets removed on ring eight, right? When I'm duping the shark that's self-infused. For now, she's better than a mollusk mage by a lot. By a lot. At least this is a pretty easy Arcus. I think we should slam Arcus because of this insane holy shield that we have and big money. Mollusk mage, I think, has to get sent here. He's one energy. It's not good. I don't want to play him. Yeah, I'm going to kill both of them here, I think. I can't fit them on floors. And then I'm, I make so much money, I can just spend 240 on a Orgon power removal. It might actually just be total recall. Well, it's a... It's literally unplayable, right? I, I can't put that in the consume pool because it just ruins my consume pool i want to be pulling better stuff yeah i'm gonna mm, i can't play this i actually can play foreground powers and echo breaks okay okay we're gonna remove total recall here i'm just spending a lot of money because i'm gonna have like i'm cool with it right i have the gift of gratitude on lock i'm just gonna play it like five times and earn all that back i think we beat arcus no problem it is sad missing the multi-strike it's fine i guess yeah, I mean, just take four, I guess. Fine. And then we blast one of these dudes down here. Sure. Sure. All right, we go up top. We bounding echoes. We Titan Sentry mid. We take 80 gold. Take two damage shield. We take Frostbite into Arcus. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Thanks for the gift of gratitude back. I'm just going to take money. Cool. Yeah. I am going to play old Kalia here. It's worth it. Worth the 40 gold. Money. Wormkin etchings. Frostbite bottom because that dude is upgraded. Cool. And we just we just cycle at this point, right? We just cycle everything. I play Bounding Echoes. Oh, I can unname Tome it, huh? Interesting, huh? And I play Gift of Gratitude for money. Damage Shield. Worm Connections. We take it all back. Huh. Huh. This is good. We'll silence first. Bounding Echoes is an etch, so I'm fine with it. I'm going to take $160 again. Damage shield etchings. I mean, this is what I want it to look like, right? This is my turn, every turn, and I'm cool with that. Aww. We saw the sadness. I don't play it up top. We do leak some, but I also don't care, right? Because I just get it all back next turn. This is ballistically strong. We're gonna Bounding Echoes mid. I'm gonna send this Confuge, this Harvester to the grave. I'm going to Silence mid. I'm going to play Gift of Gratitude for more money. I'm going to take Damage Shield on Cold Kalia, I guess. And I'm going to then Incant up top. I don't care about this damage. Oh no, I take damage. As long as I don't die in one turn, I'm going to heal it back immediately. Yeah. All right, I can let the Bounding Echoes go, I think. I want to hit this shelter now. We are going to just kill this dude in front. I'm going to let the... Actually, I'm going to keep the Bounding Echoes. I'm going to let the Tome go because it's frozen so I can do some cool stuff. I'm going to take more money. Eventually, I'll pivot over to Damage Shield here, but it's fine. Cool. All right, Shark is back. I'm just gonna play Shark every floor. It's fine. We let the Bounding Echoes go and I think I stopped playing money. I think 100,000 gold is probably enough here. I wanna just kill Horton stuff. So I could greed. How strong am I right now? I'm doing 175. I have eight damage shield. As long as I drop eight damage shield, this represents 175 a turn. He's, I mean, it doesn't matter what his damage is. He has, what, 1880 divided by 175, right? It's only 11 turns. I only need 11 turns to kill him. And that's gonna be faster with the Frostbite, so I don't actually need Holy Shield. Wow, I can just take money, greed. Yeah, we're gonna Gift of Gratitude, Holy Shield, Wormkin Etchings, and only play those cards. Ah, this is strong, I guess. I don't take Shark here. Works fine. Shark is not actually worth it, right? I haven't even drawn through my deck. <laughs> I haven't seen my shelter once. I'm just going to take another 160 gold. I don't need Shark here. I kill this man. Play Holy Shield. Play worm etchings. And we we win right here. Like this is enough, and I can just slam yeah, this this wins easily. 160 gold, dude. Rack it full. Cool. I just made I don't know, 1,300 gold or something. Cool. With the double sharks in my lineup, I should be fine for the divinity. Yo, they gave me siren song. I'm I mean, I told you I would click it. I'm clicking it. I have the drop cage, drop cage siren song, payoff. Draw cards. Cool. Oh, I got it. We did it, kids. I'm going right, because I have to take both of these hell vents. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Horde. Lost luggage is really good. Yeah. The other one was mark of a whatever, but like my dude's doing 30 damage. It's fine. We take Shellsmith too. I want to etch more armor because that seems fun. We're very good on survivability. Concealed caverns, show me something good. 
Yeah, I'll take 150. I don't need any of this. Yo, this also was the pickpocket. The pickpocket one, right? Because I passed on it in favor of the insane gift of gratitude. So you could have pickpocketed on this with the uh, petty theft. Interesting. Good to know. I, I'm i just going to take money because my pirate HP is completely expendable here. As if I need a thousand gold. I, I, we dupe. Shark. Shark dupe. We self-infuse shark here. Yep. That's good. Titan Sentry and a Titan Sentry, yes. Cool. Piercing? I could put piercing on this consume one, huh? I don't want to. I'm already going to go up to 110. I need to respect Divinity a little bit and not go wild on this. I, I feel strong, but also the fact that I miss multi-strike and I have just like durability first of kin is pretty spooky. I'm going to be relying on some stuff to do this better, right? Yeah, I'm going to be relying on some things. My spells to do a lot of work on the sharks. I, I don't need to go crazy here. We go into this battle. Okay. Heaven's seal. I need to not take this. Like, this money is worthless to me, right? And I could actually die to, like, a really bad upgraded wave because this is conduits and this 400 gold is pointless i have 1700 gold from my gift of gratitude so we just turn this off and we let frostbite kind of carry us a bit 10 card draw Ugh, kind of shame that we didn't see anything better this is a really bad first wave upgrade by the way okay i'm gonna take cold Kalia. i'm going to Play Echo right up top, unsurprisingly. If I double infuse bottom, I can consume out this thing. I do want to hold on to the Holy Shield, though. I actually let the... I freeze the... I freeze, freeze the Gift of Gratitude, right? Yeah, we freeze Gift of Gratitude here. That way I can do some stuff with it later. That's fine. I'm going to double incant double infuse bottom so I can drop the proclamation and then kill this front unit over two floors. Yes. Proclamation. Holy shield up top. Get that moving. I don't play the other holy shield right now. If I'm pulling back holy shield or proclamation, this is enough. And we skip it. Cool. Proclamation is the best hit. Shark mid. That's comfy. I do see the Wormkin etching, so I can kind of go a bit ham here. Siren Song on the wrong turn. I could have frozen it. Huh. Interesting. I might have considered doing that. I think we're fine, though. We'll stabilize here, because I'm going to blast this front dude. Yeah, so we play the cards we want to play first. Which is another way of saying Echo Break Bottom. Mid. Echo Break mid by hitting the Titan Sentry for more Frostbite. Cool. Very value. I now need to risk... What do I risk? I need to play Worm Etchings. 100%. If I discard this with Foreground Power, we lose. So I play this up top, and we just accept that. I'm going to Infuse mid now. Alright, good. We kill front dude and then I play gift of gratitude for 40 gold and I frostbite mid and we're okay cool cool and I now need to be careful I need to redraw into wormkin etchings at this point first kin down the only one I play is holy shield I guess Right? I think I actually don't play anything here. Ah, uh, no, we hit the broken memory, so we feel really strong right now. Okay, cool. I can now play everything. That changes everything because this lets me bring back, bring back warp connections, guaranteed. 
Cool, cool, awesome. So this feels great. I'm going to take four damage shield to get started. I'll take Gift of Gratitude. At this point, with 2,000 gold, you know, I could have gone... No, I couldn't have gotten Gift of Gratitude and Heaven's Gold together. That would have been funny. I can buy everything in every shop, but every single one of these Gift of Gratitude that I play is a consume trigger, and if I get money from it, it's just removals, right? Every, what is it? Six Ember of this is a removal. So I will do this. We're going to go ham. I'm going to bring back Worm Connections guaranteed. And then we are totally cool with the mid floor situation. So we just incant up top for more armor. This feels pretty strong, actually. Like, once I have the second shark, it will be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, this is really, really strong. We double shelter here. For sure. This is what, one ember? Yeah, one ember. So I'm going to play Flash Freeze first. I'm going to lose Siren at some point, but it's cool. Or Cold Kalia, whatever. We shelter. We shelter. We proclamation. What am I looking at? What five cards are in here? Double shelters. I'm actually going to just Worm Ken Etching is this. Right? And then I, I'm just gonna frostbite top, I guess. Yeah, sure. Cool. The frostbite shark is gonna do a lot of work here, right? He just carries pretty hard. I am ah man, shame about the bounding echoes draw order, right? We take money, damage shield. Shelter. I leave these purge copies in for now. Wormkin etchings. Broken memories. And we're pretty much good, I think. Do I replay Shark? Yeah, we do. Because I can just damage shield out this dude, right? So it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to take dollars here. 2,000 gold, pretty good. Holy shield. Shelter. I obviously don't play this one. Wormkin etchings. Broken memories. Cool. Freeze. Tome. Finally. Take another 120. With this much armor and this much damage shield, there's basically no way I can lose. So we're just fine with this. If this is my turn every turn, I'm cool with it. Yeah, we win. So I just take 160 money. We're going to play cards because it's smart to do so, I think. We scale there. We get there. 324 armor on the floor. That seems good. I didn't even respect this boss by drawing into the tome first, but it's cool. It's cool. I don't click any of this stuff. None of it matters. A ping? Doesn't matter. Shark does all the work. We skip it. 2,400 gold? Seems okay. Skip it. None of those answer any of my problems. A divine artifact I will take here. Oh, divine trader's quill? In my edge deck? You shouldn't have. But it's a rare... Normally I would take 25 gold here, but Frank... But I almost said it. I almost said it, but I didn't. Normally, I would take Divine Trader's Quill, but because I have 2,400 gold, it's kind of like... I Normally, I would skip, I mean. I, it's just a drop in the bucket. A drop in the ocean, rather. And this is just so good with an etch deck. We just blast Seraph into oblivion with this. So, we're going to do that. This will look fun. We're really strong. I go left, I dupe Shark, and I remove Siren. I keep calling her a Siren because her type is Siren. Cold Kalia. You did a good job. You know, she did a great job. Give me Cuddlebeard, you cowards. Precious Plating is fun because it gives me more HP to... I, I just buy everything, right? <laughs> I just buy literally everything because I have so much money. Yeah, okay. Buy every relic. 
Uh, don't buy Volatile Gauge. Do I buy Volatile, volatile Gauge? No, absolutely not. Spell Totem Fragment, sure. Wounds of the Blacksmith, sure. Remove, we do Shark at this point. And then we just take removals. I guess I'll look in the middle, right? I may as well. Plus 30. I mean, 300 damage proclamation is pretty good. It's pretty good. I have so much defense. Let's, I'll think about it. We're going to take the removal on Colt Kalia first because she's actively bad right now. Yes. She now hurts me. Yep, remove. She did a great job. I know if I win this run, which I think I might at this point, I'm going to give a lot of shout out to her, even though she's not in this run anymore. We're basically not going to play Gift of Gratitude anymore. It's too bad they didn't show me Golden Vault or I would have bought out the Divinity and that would have been a real comfy run. But it's cool. I'm going to remove, I don't know what, take a minus one into Siren Song here and then I'm going to freeze it. Actually, I could just freeze it and maybe hit a double stack. I'm going to freeze this for sure, though, right? Like, there's no way around it. That way I always have the five days on the turn I need it. It's a really good kill. Yeah, I freeze it and then I don't put a minus one in it yet because they could show me double stack. Cool. 20 and consume. I'm going to put it into the other proclamation. If I need to cycle both proclamations on a turn to clear a wave, it's really good to be able to do that. I can kind of cultivate my consume pile as I go. Yep, we do that. The minus one goes into flash freeze, I guess. Well, I basically have 235 gold to work with, right? Because I'm going to take two removals. I may as well take two removals right now. Just kick foreground power. Yeah, and then I kick another foregone power. I'm cool just spending 300 gold on removals. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm fine. With echo breaks are targeted and I'm going to have a lot of echoes. This is like at least something and I can always ping shark with it. Right. So, yeah, foregone power is my worst card here. Everything else that says etch is good or that says consume rather. Yeah, just fewer cards to get through. Cool. And now with 235 gold, that's what? I re-roll, so that's one, 175. So I can at worst buy two minus ones. And yeah, I can at worst buy two minus ones. So I'll take a minus one and a holy shield, actually. It's just the best thing I could do. Reroll it. Buy whatever they get. Hold over. Hold over Siren Song. I can just hold it if I don't want to play it. It being frozen is really good because on turns where I don't need it, it now does not take up a draw. I don't mind spending one Ember on that because what am I spending Ember on? It's this and Sharks. This is extremely good. Ah, yeah, I'm feeling comfy. I'll put another minus one into this. Holy shield. And we have now spent an obscene number of dollars. I had 2,000 something gold and I just burned everything. I duped the shark now because this is how I'm handling the fact that I missed multi-strike on this run. Although I could also do it with Siren Song. I feel really comfortable about this run now with that holdover. Yeah, cool. 110, I'm, gonna, I'm cruising, we're cool. I could actually go more. How many relics I have, wow. Patient, I don't think you stand a chance. I have teched against you pretty hard with this intrinsic holy shield. Really value. We just go. We just go here. I can't afford anything else. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is a really bizarre run that I think is going to be so informative for a lot of different reasons, and I'm really glad we get to see it. I just I just have turn one siren song, which is free. Uh, frozen Tome, though. Oh, yeah. Divine Traitor's Quill. We Frozen Tome first because we drew it, and it's excellent. This prevents the rally triggers. We do Echo Right. We do First of Kin. I can actually put First of Kin in the back. No, it's in the front because it's so beefy. And then 
The four ember is good. I take the days on Seraph here. I could play eight damage shield here, but I actually think the etch onslaught is better. No, I'm just going to take eight damage shield here and then not play the purge copy on the shelter. Yeah, this is fine. The eight damage shield is really comfy here. And I don't need to play Gift of Gratitude at this point, unless I want extra etches. It's fine to keep it in rotation right now, actually. It also just does 60 damage. What? Sure. Of course it hits the other foreground power. I'm fine with this. I have so much damage shield, we're cool. We want to put the Bounding Echoes in rotation. I'm going to Shark mid. Actually, I can Shark bottom here. Yeah, we shark bottom. The reason why is because I'm just going to blast this Shade Wings with whatever consume spell I play because of the Traitor's Quill. I'm going to take a whole... This is a perfect example of why the freeze is so good on Siren Song, right? I can just chill. Literally. I just Holy Shield here for eight. We hold on to the Unnamed Tome because I don't need to play it on this turn. And I... Broken memories here. Yeah, I have five cards in the reform pool. I'm going to have four at the end of this turn. I need to make sure I keep it at five, right? I'm going to bring back shelter, I think. It's the one I want to play the most. Scale a little bit here. We're cool with this. And I hold on to these cards. I'm going to see both sharks on this turn is fine. One bottom, one mid. Wow, we actually... Hell's Banner's value, huh? Eight. This is now the turn of Siren Song, I think. Anytime he's up here, it's a great Siren Song turn, and the Iron Drop Cage is too strong. Neat. Neat. Neat, neat, neat. All right, I'm gonna... With 16 damage shield, I can just kind of ignore Holy Shield at this point. Although it's a good dump for my Ember, right? Let's see what I draw into. Eh, bad thing. There's no reason to play Proclamation. This combat has no double heavies, basically. So we can just lean hard into this. We shelter first. Then we Holy Shield, and then we sit on this. Yeah. Shelter back is good. I now can draw more cards. Yeah, neat. All right. I want to get spells back. So if I play Wormkin Etchings and no other Consume spell, we should be okay because I have the Broken Memories in rotation. So no matter what, I bring five back. Let's say I miss Broken Memories. That means Broken Memories and Wormkin Etchings are in the Reform Pool, which is perfect for next turn. So I just play Wormkin Etchings here. And we leave everything else out of rotation. I ping my shark. Seems good. I am going to freeze the shelter here. That's a really good hit for next turn, and I don't play foreground power. Cool. Bounding Echoes, great. We double shark play. Actually, it's first Bounding Echoes. This is the Bounding Echoes turn of destiny. Hit everything of value. Excellent. Then it's Shark. Shark. That's like the one turn for, for that right now. I take the Siren Song because it's so much days. Cool. And we just slam. Yeah, I mean, with the broken memories in rotation, I should be good to just slam here. Wormkin etchings, of course. I only need to play one of these, so I'm going to play the one that has more damage shield. At 36 damage shield, I think we're cozy. <laughs> yeah, we're cozy here. Hmm, 10 days. Is that good? Yeah, so like, I do, and now I have double heavy, right? This is like 
this is what we're going to be looking at for the divinity like i have this setup here right where there's two heavies and they don't have a ton of frostbite because the divinity's not attacking and the waves aren't big enough so how do i solve this siren song only represents five turns which is oh remember i have boons the blacksmith so this is actually just free i do have totem fragment though if i want to just absolutely annihilate one but right siren song is just free right because 55 times 5 is 275 and he only has 255 yeah all right just get sent dude seems good wow we're gonna frostbite seraph and then i just play spells I have three in rotation right now. I don't need to draw cards, right? Is my shelter in there? Yeah, my shelter's in there. These are just like straight up the best spells I could do. Yeah, these are just the best ones. I'm going to play Proclamation here. Actually, no, I don't even need to. I win defend I win Relentless with 36 damage shield, yeah. All right, we're going to just slam Wormkin Etchings. I'm going to play Proclamation, though, I think. And then I think we leave our sharks dead for Relentless, right? Yes. We leave our sharks dead for Relentless. Because then we can abuse the daze. It doesn't matter. He's already dead. It's fine. Why am I overthinking this? Just click card. Unga. Yeah. Just click card. Unga. Sure. Unga click card. I, it, at this point, it no longer matters. Not one bit. I will play the shark here, of course. We do bounding echoes, which means all of my hits are now good. I can hold on to Siren Song. It's fine. I don't need to play it. I, this dude's already dead. It's fine. Hmm. All right, just shelter, shelter here. It's fine. He died to that. We'll etch. Fine. Okay, this is relentless. We let our shark die and leave it dead. It'll take one turn to get that. Cool. We leave mid floor dude dead and we're fine. Yeah. Yeah. This is it. With 44 damage shield, I think we're cozy. Just play shelter a bunch. I don't know. Just play shelter a bunch, yeah. I'll take holy shield, sure. And then we... I could do bounding echoes first, actually, because of the... Sure, why not? Seems good. I'm going to kill this guy in the mid, though, because he has spikes and I don't want to send him up to the pyre. Order, by the way. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. This is this is so over, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. Shelter, shelter, shelter. We're dead. Uh, I can play one more. I'm just gonna kill the front dude. Fine. And then this gives me six turns of days for free. Uh, yeah, there's no way I'll lose here. Warm connections. Yep. Hey, look, he's dead. He doesn't even take a swing on me. Hmm. Let's see what our numbers look like, because I think I want to check it out. We're going to blast him for 500 here, because that seems good. Although I'm going to play a bunch of shelters first, I think. Yeah, we're just going to blast this man into the absolute stratosphere. Yeah, that, that looks good. He dies before his days wore off and I had something like 50 damage shield. But my defense is out of control. I just need to make sure I'm actually killing the, 
divinity waves and that's what the sharks are for right that's what the sharks are for they're gonna do a lot of work because the divinity hits and the waves have a lot of hp and a lot of attacks shark turn one is excellent he almost clears everything we're gonna take a siren song out of the gate here because there's no reason to take these hits up top yeah echo right is down fine i will offering token okay um i can just send the foreground power i don't have to think about this too hard yeah, we offering, we Siren Song for sure. I'm fine redrawing that, that's five days, excellent. I drew the better Holy Shield, so I'm just gonna keep that in rotation now and take 14 damage shield onto this guy. I need to keep it thin right now until I have, I need to, because I need to redraw, right? Yeah, okay, so we're gonna do Holy Shield for 14 and I'm gonna actually freeze my proclamation I, in case I need it for an important turn and we just keep everything out of rotation for now fine thanks shark extremely cool we now mid floor shark ah uh, but we didn't hit right we hit both units together and without a way of triggering huh What is the more important role here? I mean, it has to be first of kin, getting him scaling. It has to be that. There's no way around it. And he's three Ember. Ah, oh, man. What an unfortunate draw, hitting them both on one turn. And I even froze the consume. If I had kept the preserve, I think we could have frozen the shark and had him next turn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play first of kin. And I'm not going to play, I mean, I can't play Siren Song, right? But I'm gonna avoid redrawing cards and I'm gonna try to keep it light on the edge blasting here. Right? Yes. I do wanna put one thing in the pool and start this rotating, right? Yeah. Yes. I'm not going to play Broken Memories here. I'm just going to keep playing this damage shield for now until I need to actually use Proclamation. And I think it's just going to be Proclamation. I'm going to keep my Consume Pool clean of the Wormkin Etchings and Broken Memories line so that I get back to this other shark. Okay. 17 Frostbite. Mid-floor, I think, does kill itself on the Frostbite here, right? I need to be careful about this. I can always Siren Song the hell out of it, right? Yeah. I don't play Shelter, either. Well, I think 18 damage shield is enough for now. I actually think Shelter is better. But the problem is Shelter represents more cards in my deck, so I actually don't play Shelter. I'm going to rely on Holy Shield here. I am going to play Bounding Echoes. It's a good time to hit it. There's a lot of good hits in here. Wormkin etchings and everything. Yes. Yes, absolutely. I do have Siren Song for extreme measures, right? I have no problem trading Pyre HP with spikes and nonsense like that. This Harvest Wave is spooky. I can just ascend next turn and accept any damage I take. It's fine. Yeah, so I'll play the Shark Bottom. Kills both of the small HP dudes perfect and I don't play Wormkin etchings is the important one I want to bring back holy shield I guess it's better than yeah this is fine this is acceptable I sit on this I don't need to ramp the etching yet because I'm gonna just blast once I reach a certain point I need to respect this boss here I'm gonna freeze him after I, I'm gonna Siren Song here because reasons. Fine, I take nine just from the Clip Defender with spikes, it's cool. Oh no, it's four and then the 
Flip Shaman. Yeah, fine. And now I Bounding Echoes. I'm going to freeze Chains so he doesn't curse me. And I guess I just Incant. Or actually, I'm going to Ping Shark twice. Which is really good just to get more Frostbite on the floor. And... No, it's fine. My plan is, with 24, does this actually kill? If I can clear the front guy, I can... What is it? Totem Fragment. It's over here. Totem Fragment obliterate the mini boss. I have two turns to deal with that, though. I should see an answer. This is actually surprisingly clean, right? I redraw here. Cool. Fine. Top floor is just Siren Song, which is beautiful. Yep, just send it. I need to... Ah, uh, excellent, right. I have the other proclamation here, which is great news. So I just put two shards middle. Blast them with this one. And then I always have the other one ready. Yep, and I only put one holy shield in play just to keep some etching going. Cool. Obviously, all the extra holdovers are kind of annoying for this. We do slow us down, but we see the second shark, so we're fine. So now we can go ham. Yep. So, like, this top floor is horrifying, right? But the totem fragment and the fact that I kept these spells is really good. So I just obliterate him, right? Excellent. We're going to take... I'm going to just play Siren Song every turn because he makes my Relentless, like, impossible to lose with that much daze. Because I took this drop cage and I took the siren song when they showed it to me. So hell yeah, I'm gonna play it. And now now we just send it. Every every consume spell is fine. Yep. Just play everything. Just play everything, yeah. Cool. Bounding echoes first for whatever's left over. Oh, good. I didn't get the other one that gives me a shard. It's cool because I had the unnamed tome on lock for this. Siren Song just ends these dudes. Neat. Hmm. Seems good. More damage shield. I'm going to start putting the damage shield in the back because 32 in the front is probably enough. Cool. Cool. I mean, at this point, we're going to have so much days that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it's kind of just plays itself at this point. Neat. Oh no, I take Spike's damage. I just don't care. Oh no, I take two. 23 days, probably enough. Yeah, we just kind of go crazy here. Yeah, we go crazy. As long as I have enough yeah, as long as I have enough. Okay, remember, we need to kill this dude by using the totem fragment. I almost just sent him up with Siren's Song, and that would have been bad. Hey, look, we did it. Neat. I mean, I do send him up now. I don't care. I take five. Cool. play everything, I guess. It's fine. I could take the Worm Connections here, draw more cards, I guess. I have less armor than I did, but I also have 27 days on the Divinity, and I do enough damage that with 27 days I win, so we're fine. Cool. We even get an extra Shark fresh for the Divinity. We win. Look at this. Missing. Look at this ugly as sin first of kin it doesn't have an infusion all right that's how bad this is this run was absolutely cursed and we still just absolutely blast it shark get him get him shark just send it on everything i guess sure and i'm not gonna siren song here because i want perfect score and you can't stop me cool 
I think 30, 30 damage shield across the floor is pretty good. All right. Well, you know what? This is kind of one of those weird ones. But we get there, and we will take these. This run took a lot longer than I would have wanted because, you know, a lot of brain power went into it because Wormkin. But we get there, and it showcases a lot of the cool stuff that I think we want to be showcasing. So I'm pretty pleased with that run. I'm actually really pleased with it. We're going to talk about it more in the run summary, but but yeah, what a good run. What a good run. All right, let's hit the run summary and get this moving. Cool. So there, there's a lot of stuff I want to talk about, and I'm trying. I'm going to try to keep this under two hours, so I got five minutes to get through it. First of all, I had some pretty fun hits here. The real blessed stuff, Hope for Peace, followed up by Holy Shield. Oh, never mind. Hope for Peace with, where is it? Gift of Gratitude, just insane amounts of money. I spent 2,500 gold casually in Ring 8. Just no problem. Removed so many things. I bought so many removals at 300 gold. It was just crazy. So that's awesome. What a good blessed seed. I did eventually get the Shark self-infused and duped. Uh, this is an important one, right? So there are a lot of runs where I see people make mistakes about multi-strike, right? I even made a video guide about this. And the fact is that a lot of players that I see would have not identified the shark line and would have instead hunted multi-strike at every steel shop. They would have gone to the steel shop at ring eight and not done this self-infuse. And, you know, I think we could have still won by hunting that, frankly. Dang, I did say it. That's one time in the video. Um, but... Okay, that's one time. I do think we could have won, but that's mostly because we would have been carried pretty hard by the fact that I did ultimately finally find Siren Song with the Ring 1 drop cage and this being the only Ascend or Descend card in my clan combo. So pretty fun. I'm glad I saw it. The freeze and holdover on it was awesome. It just let me hold it for the turns that mattered. We were really strong. This... The real winning line was seeing the Wormkin etchings, taking it, putting the minus two in it, and then seeing, where is it? The broken memories? Yeah, here it is. Because these two just let me ramp the etches out of control. And we got to the point where I was just blasting damage shield and siren songing everything away, and the run looked really clean. But there were a lot of really good hits here. Just a lot of good stuff. You know, being able to bring back that unnamed tome to silence the... Uh, mini boss so I didn't get curses or the blights and so that went meant that I got to see my second shark even with that bad draw on turn two in the divinity not a problem right uh, we had enough with the other cards that we drew we just kind of played it chill on the edges and we were fine I don't even think we really played where is it shelter once on the divinity we never saw it. We just kind of blasted at any etch that mattered at any etch that we had on the end turns. We had so much days on it that it didn't matter. Really good. What a really good run. There's a lot of really fun stuff here that I think is strong. It, refracting lens meant that any damage I took was free. I took 30 from a 15 by two on some combat and was like, whatever. And I out healed it with refracting lens because this relic is bonkers with this champion and this line, right? Just really good you know the fact that we missed multi-strike i didn't even infuse my first of kin and we still get there it just did enough damage and we had enough survivability that relentless didn't matter i could tank 100 turns casually from any boss at that point so this run was great it showcases a lot of stuff i'm really happy to see and yeah you know obviously if i had you know if I had, you know, perfect foresight, I would have known about the first Hell Pact because first Hell Pact with Hope for Peace, and then I also saw the Gift of Gratitude. It would have been absolutely crazy, but it's cool. This was already just so strong, just so strong. I'm really happy about how this run played out, even with how bad the beginning was, just playing it cool, not going too aggro, just taking the things that matter and moving on, so... So yeah, the final count, I think, on times I said the word after my initial conversation, only one in the run summary, believe it or not. So I, I think that's better, right? I thought as long as I put some thought into it, we should be okay. 
And so, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. So, hey, as always, thanks a lot for watching this. I really appreciate your time. You know, give the video a like or a dislike if you want. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And stay tuned for what's next, folks. Take care.